Uh, almost caught myself there. Oh. There we go. Welcome, folks. Welcome to Heck Off. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> Welcome, folks, to Vintage Style Vintage Values. I am, once again, your growingly long-haired host, uh, T.R. Sarter on Vintage Style Vintage Values. We are going to have us a very fun night tonight. I am super excited for the show because I've been wanting to do this. This is actually one of the content ideas I had when I first... Um, let me open up chat here first before I go on my little tangent here. Okay, everyone's looking good in chat. Excellent. But yeah, so this right here, what we're going to be doing today is something that I've wanted to do since I first started doing really content. And it was a skill that I learned. You know, I kind of taught myself because I wanted to do it to a couple bags that I had in college. And I, um, and I wanted to learn it. And I used some YouTube tutorials to learn it. But this... Through, with this stream here, I'm going to take you through my full process for taking a kind of beat up pair. These are Johnston Murphys. So mid-tier, um, pretty beat up old pair of Johnston Murphys. Thrifted these for a friend. I also found a, uh, a Burberry suit for him as well on the same trip. So I got my friend all dripped out uh, regardless of budget. You know, that's what I live to do. But, um, but yeah, so what we're going to be taking these, like I said, a little beat up. Need, need a little bit of love. They were not very well taken care of, apparently. And uh, we're going to give them some new life. There's some things that I won't be able to fix entirely. There's a couple little nicks. There's one on the toe of the right shoe right here on the vamp that I won't be able to entirely fix, but I have some wax. I have some other stuff that will get it pretty darn close. And then these nicks and brushings up here. I've got plenty of wax and all sorts of things. And along with just, you know... Um, Along with just like cleaning them up, because we don't just clean things up here. We, you know, we fix things up. We make things better than they were when we found them. I'm actually going to be adding a custom artisan patina here live on the show for you tonight. So you're going to see how, if you ever see those shoes that are like dark in some places and light in the other place and how that's done, I'm going to take you through the whole process tonight, which is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a pretty relaxed drink. This is always fun for me. Um, if you want to play anything, want me to play anything in the background, obviously feel free to super chat at uh, powerchat.live slash tr. Sorry, you can power chat there if you want to send me a link or if you want to drop a link in chat. I'm not opposed to that. You know, drop a link in there. We can jam out to some stuff. I think it's going to be a really fun night. I'll be hanging out with the chat a little bit. And uh, like I said, be watching me take these rather beat up. Johnston Murphys and turn them into something that, you know, looks worth, you know, they'll, uh, they'll go from looking like they were pulled out of a thrift store to looking like they were, uh, they are fresh out of some, uh, Italian tannery. So I'm just drinking a little Manhattan to, uh, you know, like I said, it's fun. We're relaxing. Little Manhattan never killed anybody. Well, nobody that'd be missed anyway. Oh, I love a good Manhattan. Luckily for me, I make the best ones. Don't, I won't really need my glasses for this. But, um... Yo, France and Raid! Oh, oh no. Oh, my pistol's in the other room. I'm, a, I'm under attack. We love France. What's up, guys? Hope everyone's doing well. 
Excellent, excellent. We love France, and we love... I'm actually planning on having the guy on the show. Uh, Mid-December is the plan. You know, tentative date, but um, but probably mid-December, France is going to come on. I'm thinking I'm thinking we're going to do a call together. I think that might be fun. I love having Steve on the show. I uh, had him on uh, a fair while back. Um, had him on for the first time. This will be the second time. It'll be really cool. Long time no see, TR. Long time no see you, NZ. Good to see you again, buddy. But anyway... Bourbon or wine? Well, <laughs> a Manhattan is actually rye and wine. So it's both. So, yes. <laughs> Picked up some fire Wenatchee's from J. Fitzpatrick. Black Friday sales. You know, so true. Good good on you, Darth Grammar. What color did you get? Did you get the dark brown? I hope you got the dark brown. If not, I think, they're, they, I think they brought back the tan one. They have the burgundy one. I have the burgundy and a couple of the suede ones. I really love the Wenatchee design is like my favorite from J. Fitzpatrick because it's such a good starter shoe. The Franchers send their regards. Well, I regard the Franchers well. Franchers are always welcome around here. All right. But anyway, let's get let's get right into it. All right. Yo, we broke a hundred. Let's freaking go. We broke a hundred viewers. Second stream back from a long hiatus, and we're already breaking a hundred. I would say it's a big white pill. That might be that might be like the thirtieth biggest white pill this week. You know, you never know. <laughs> a lot of big stuff is happening. We were toasting a lot of great stuff. And then I came back and we toasted even more great stuff, man. We just we just can't stop winning. We really can't. The dark oak and black, excellent choices, excellent choices, Gummer. I love those, love those. I, uh, I have some black uh, Ascot button boots on the way from J. Fitzpatrick. The black and white ones, they're gonna look really good with my mass attire. They, those are, I've been I've been wanting to add those to my collection for a while, um, and I finally finally do. So, all right. Anyway, let's get into. I'm gonna take you through. We're actually gonna switch over here because. I think you've seen enough of my mug as it is, at least for now. All right, so I'm just going to bring the camera a little bit over here, bring the shoes a little over here. All right, get my, we'll leave that over there. I don't need those right now. All right, so first thing I did was I put them in shoe trees for a couple days just to help get some of these wrinkles out of the, uh, of the vamp here. And, you know, like I said, I put a little bit of oil into them as well, just like to so give them a little... A little moisture, you know, make sure everything is looking good as far as make sure there's no, uh, you know, there's no like real cracks or anything like that. Let me talk, found out about this. There's a little spot of damage here. That's a little bit of a gash, but, um, you know, there's a, there's a nick right there, but those kind of things can be fixed with wax pretty well. I'm not too worried about those, but the first thing we're going to have to do, I mean, obviously we're going to get the laces out of them, but the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to strip all the varnish off these. It's very similar to uh, re it's actually very similar to treating a floor. If you've ever treated wood floors or dealt with wood floors, leather is very, very similar to woodwork. There's a lot of similarities, and in in the, the Venn diagram is pretty circular when it comes to woodwork and leather work, especially when it comes to treating them, giving them finishes, coloring, things like that. So these are actually laced terribly. I hate it when people do X lacing with an Oxford. There's really one good way to lace an Oxford and that is bar lacing, which is where you just see, I'll do it at the end here. I'm actually gonna, my friend that uh, I got these for, that I'm doing this for him, I'm actually gonna give him uh, a couple pairs of laces that are different colors to, uh, you know, help coordinate with some of his outfits. Cause I think these look good with brown. And I think it's kind of fun if you wanna have a little personality to do uh, blue laces. Colorful laces are like the adult version of like those colorful socks you used to see at weddings in the early 2000s and like 20 teens. I love a nice little colorful lace from time to time. I've got a pair of like really light tan Oxfords that I, I have some pink laces and I wear with my seersucker suit all the time, like a pink tie. Yo! Stone just followed. Let's go, my hero, Roger Stone, fellow drip supremacist. Stone, let's go. Stone, uh, he answered, uh, Mr. Stone answered my question about gauntlet cuffs the other day, which is a design signature of my custom suits. Uh, gauntlet cuffs and action backs, which was very, very cool. I, ho I hope he, I hope he saw the clip that I posted of, uh, of him answering that. Yes, Roger Stone, so cool. So glad to have him in here. We love Roger Stone, a fellow drip supremacist here at Cozy.TV, a fellow canceled drip supremacist. So these laces, I do believe, can be saved. Um, you know, I'd probably wax them over a little bit, 
warm them up. But um, but I do believe these dark brown laces can be saved. Like I said, I'm going to give a couple other nice pairs of laces. Yo, Stone did nothing wrong. Absolutely. I can't think of a wrong thing Roger Stone ever did. You know, except for except for not getting a custom suit from T.R. Sarter, maybe. <laughs> all right, so let's start with the first one here. We're going to strip all the varnish off of this. For that, I'm actually using uh, acetone, which you can buy this in hardware stores. You can buy this in, uh, you know, Walmart, whatever. This stuff is a very harsh solvent. It's not so harsh that it's going to damage the leather too much. It's just going to strip all this, all this dye, all this oil and varnish off of this. And what it's going to do, it's going to reopen all the pores in the leather for us to put on the new dye, which is going to look 10 times cooler than this. We're going to do a bunch of detailing, and I'll take you through that process as well. But first thing we're going to do, we're going to, well, I'm going to check out one of my, my gloves first here, as, as this stuff is not particularly good for the skin. Going to rebuild StoneOnStyle.com and get it going soon. I probably will like. I probably will like, Mr. Stone. I would love to see that. I will shill that till the cows come home. All right. So I use I use just torn up pieces of T-shirt as a cloth as paper towel. I keep it here in case I spill something. But um, but paper towel you typically don't want to use on this stuff because it because paper towel tends to break off. You don't want any you know, bits of paper getting in, especially with the broguing and things like that. You don't want any bits of paper getting in eyelets or broguing or anything like that. I've got another big thing of acetone in case I run out here, because this is all from my old kit back when I lived in Tennessee, because I actually didn't do much of this when I was in D.C. I did it a little bit, but my kit mostly stayed in its case until I, uh, until I came back to, uh, back home, really, to, uh, to Pennsylvania, back home from Tennessee to Pennsylvania. So yeah, we're just going to, you know, basically with this right here, you're just going to wipe it down because the acetone is going to do its job and it, then it's going to evaporate. So, and you don't need a ton of this stuff to do this. You just need enough, like I said, to strip that initial varnish away. It's going to lighten the color of it a little bit. And that's how you know that that varnish has been stripped away. You can kind of see it coming off on the cloth here. I have not done this in a while, but I used to love doing this. It's actually a really cool uh, service I used to offer. I used to do the patina job, which is what you'll see towards the end here, where I add new colors and stuff to the shoe, is I used to do this for about 90 bucks a pair. It used to be about a $90 chart. People would mail me their shoes, they'd pay for shipping, and they'd pay the $90 uh, service. So you can see it already starting to lighten up there. So, I, and the cool thing about brogues, I actually love doing these with brogues. One, because it gives you a nice template of where you want to put your patina at. And then two, you, um, and then two, you can kind of go section by section by section by section. And it kind of guides you a little bit because of the texture of the broguing. Stone X Sarter collab. You know, that would, that would be, that'd be pretty cool, Mr. Stone. I would be down with that. But you and I are in a few, I think you and I have a couple mutual chats. I'll, I'll definitely DM you. So that would be... I actually asked, uh, I asked, uh, so I know, I know you know Dalton Clodfelter pretty well. I, I asked him if he had, uh, if he had heard of the Vintage Style Vintage Value show at all. Wipe in single stroke sometimes, but with this, I prefer to go in little circular motions. Especially on the vamp up here, it just feels more natural. Especially in these little rounded edges up here. Kind of the, the edge of the wingtip here. It just feels more natural to do little circles. Like I said, it's going to, uh, you know, it may have to go over it once or twice. It's totally fine. And then the acetone we won't use again in this project. And, um, we, but the only other time I'll use acetone when I'm working on these shoes here is I do what's called a marble patina, which is where the, the, um, it's one of my favorite ways to style a shoe a little bit, and it basically gives like a marbled look. Actually met you in Orlando. Was that at a, was that outside of CPAC? So I, th I, we may have we may have met briefly. I I I was. I was I was I had my eyes on stocks that entire weekend. So. <laughs> I have my eyes on stocks and my uh, my face in a in a uh, in a Manhattan most of that weekend. <laughs> oh, 
okay, okay, with gas. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. At the uh, at the house that shall not be it, that whose whose address was was top tippy top secret. <laughs> yeah, there were so many people popping in and out of there. Um, I wish we could have sat and talked a little bit. If I was more if I was more situationally aware, we probably we probably would have. Is definitely a big. Uh, I actually did a whole uh, analysis on my favorite Roger Stone fits um, to celebrate you coming to Cozy, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I loved the. Uh, I think we talked about the three piece suit with the double breasted waistcoat, um, the you know the the black and white suspenders look with the spread collar, and one of your three button suits. We uh, we broke down, which was pretty cool. I, I'm a big three button fan. I'm a sucker for two buttons. That means I get to do even wider lapels, though. Yeah, so we're going to get around to the quarter and the heel here. Your game streams are incredible. Hearing you yell the N-word loving Yankees is top tech. His producer. Okay, that's why. I was about to say, I'm pretty sure I would have remembered seeing, seeing Roger at the party. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, I remember uh, at that at that house. Um, okay, I, I misunderstood the message. Okay, okay, yeah. Let's say I don't remember. I don't remember Roger Stone at the at the house. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, anyway, um, the uh, you know the 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 house had a certain degree of libation about it. And I really enjoyed that. It was making a. Polynesian Pearl Divers. Which are terrific drinks. They're very tasty tiki drinks. Uh, from the golden age of tiki drinks in the 60s. But, very little known secret, well, very well known secret if you read the freaking recipe, is, uh, you know, it includes three shots of rum. Not everyone's ready for three shots of rum, even if it's in a very smooth drink, like a Pearl Diver. You can see, look at, look at that. You can already start to see the difference. See, that's with the varnish stripped off. That's with the varnish still on it. So I am going to go over a couple parts of this again, though, just because it's still looking a little on the shinier side. We don't want shiny right now. We will want shiny at the end. I'm sartarded. We are sartarded here. We are very much sartarded. We get sartarded in here. I love my Sartards. Arguably, Cozy.tv Special Forces uh, have been commonly, you know, if you watch the, uh, the documentaries, um, you know, they talk about one of the most legendary Special Forces units um, really in human history is the Sartard. You know, striking fear into the dripless wherever we may go. They are drip checks are legendary. We've toppled entire drip taterships, installed dripmocracy across the world. Now you're not a mod, bro, Mac man. Okay. Here, D DM me, and I'll uh, I'll I'll add you as a mod. We gotta be. Uh, we gotta get some vetting going on. We had a, you know, an issue a while back with uh, with people getting modded. People, little sneaky buggers. Corn pop groiper. I have zero tri drip. Well, corn pop groiper. If you stick around with me, I can help you out. That's what I do. It's what I live for. This is what I do. Yeah, you remember you remember the uh, the mod chaos. Everyone, real old heads will remember the uh, the mod chaos. All right, that's looking really good. I'm liking the look of that. Yeah, we're starting to get a little bit of aeration here, which is a good sign because that's you know before we put on any dye. Being on the really light side is very very good. That matte light color is exactly what we're looking for because it means the leather. It means the leather's being humbled. It's being punished, you know, for its pride and having that varnish, all that vanity. So it's, it's having that stripped away. You're basically putting the shoe through purgatory right now. 
Where are these shoes from? These shoes are from a thrift store. But uh, no, they're they're made by uh, uh, Jay Murphy. Yeah, Johnston Murphy. Yep. I wish they, if I had the equipment, I would totally put a leather sole on this uh, for the fellow as well. But, um, but it's going to have to stay rubber sole right now. Did you ever go to those DC Young Republican events and offend uh, women on, uh, on your thoughts on women's rights? All the time, Dr. Kecker. I, that was like my favorite thing to do in DC was, because um, there are, there are groipers all over, like DC Young Republicans. There are groipers that go to those events every month. They go to all the socials. There's always groipers at DC Republican events. There, there have been for the last couple of years, as far as I know. Um, you know, I rolled with them a lot. We were, we were a good group of homies. Um, some of them are still there doing good stuff, and God bless them. They're good friends. But, um, and some are a little more subtle than others. I was not looking for a job in D.C., but, you know, as long as you stay optical, you know, you can be, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, an obstinate, I guess. You know, maybe not a, a dissident is the right word. Because, like I said, you don't want to, because you'll get banned from those events, and you will give a bad reputation if you go in there, like, just being, like, a belligerent asshole. But if you go in there and, you know, you look good, you behave well, and you're just like, yeah, no, I don't, um, I don't subscribe to like this like corporate, you know, the normal crap that, you know, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that these kind of people try to push, then, um, you know, that, that's a good time and you can have a good bit of fun that way. All right. Now we're going to move on to the second shoe. We're going to let this one kind of, once again, kind of air out, let those newly opened pores really breathe their, their first bit of air for a long time. And theoretically, you could just dye the shoe without doing this, but you'd be retarded to do so. As it's kind of like painting on something that's shiny. Like, just take some sandpaper and uh, get that shine off, you know? It's, you know, people always try to cut corners and do all this silly stuff. And it's, uh, you know, like, people always ask me, oh, do you have to do this? Do you have to do that? Like, technically, you don't have to do anything. But, uh, but if you don't do it my way, you're probably going to mess something up. And then you're going to be wanting some. You're going to be asking my expertise on how to fix this, uh, you know, this this mess up you found yourself in. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I love going to those events. When John Rock just says Bernadette Banner, yeah, Bernadette, Bernadette Banner knows who I am. Her, she knows who I am um, because I exposed her friend Zach Pinsent for being an ex-homosexual on-screen prostitute. And um, I got a strike on Instagram for that. Well, some of the stuff I posted to expose him got me a strike on Instagram. But uh, but yeah, Zachary Pinsent on Instagram of Pinsent Tailoring is actually an ex... He is a homosexual. He's an outspoken, uh, you know, proud homosexual. But he is, a, um, he is an ex... Uh, on-screen prostitute. I don't like to use the word porn star because it just sounds too much like an actual career path. It's, you know, too officiating because um, if you are, you know, a, an actor or actress in the pornography industry, that's what you are. You're an on-screen prostitute. Yo! Tenrio's in chat. Let's go. What's going on, Tenrio? We just fixing up some shoes here. You know, especially with Ye in the game now. I have to show off my, my shoe enthusiasm in my own way. I really do relate to, you know, I, I think I think everyone kind of in, you know, AF and who's been around for a little bit relates to Ye, of course. But uh, as a fashion designer, um, granted, Ye and I have very different styles. I don't think that's any kind of a secret. But um, but I really do understand, like, Ye's desire to change culture through fashion, to, to create this, like, imagery and express yourself through this imagery and express your, you know, your truth through your truth it sounds like express the truth through uh you know through imagery through style through something that you know decorates you every day and is is really a part of who you are vintage yay vintage style vintage yay dude if if yay ever was like hey man i'll do a suit i i might pass out i might pass out i've actually started studying yay's style a little bit over the years a little bit more and more because it is very different than mine it's a very different school of thought. It's a very different aesthetic. But, uh, but it does have my curiosity. So I have studied it, you know, and I'm still continuing to study it. And I think it's very interesting because the, um, you know, my stuff is very centered around, like, the more natural proportions of the body, you know, more classically inspired kind of thing. 
What I think is interesting about Ye is he actually promotes one of the same values I promote, and that's modesty. But he promotes it through a much more almost like futuristic um, kind of aesthetic. You know, this very like boxy, um, you know, boxy shirts and boxy hoodies. You know, to, to a layman, they might not realize this, but that, that shaping, that cutting, that style really promotes a very high degree of modesty because it's not a very shapely garment. So whether it's a man or a woman wearing it, it's not sh it's not shaping to their body and creating this um, you know this very bodily material image about them. It's creating you know granted it makes the garment more of the focus because it's so detached from the body, but it does promote modesty. I'm just going to give it a good once over. Make sure all this varnish is stripped off before we get into the uh, the tongue of the shoe here, which is always the biggest headache. I hate dealing with the tongue of the shoes. That's like one of the only redeeming parts about really working on loafers. Um, the foot smell, is, especially if someone's been wearing them for a while, is really doesn't really make up for that. But um, That is groovy. Yeah, see, that's already starting to lighten up, and once it dries out here, it'll be nice. Very based shoes. You know, a true, a true, uh, a true radical right wing extremist uh, has patinas on all of his Oxfords. Really, you know, it's just a fact of the matter. If you're gonna have Oxford shoes, you should uh, strip the varnish off of them and put a patina on them. How will how will anyone know? You know that you are a um, that you're a, uh, a bigot, uh, a transphobe, a homophobe, a sexist, and an anti-Semite if you don't have a really nice patina uh, on your shoes. Really, at the end of the day, that's the real question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited for Nick to come back tonight. Uh, I, I absolutely cannot flipping wait, man. I am so ready to, uh, to hear all the stories. It is going to be so, so cool. Yes, yeah, so that's looking good right there. Actually, let me. Yeah, it's gonna strip. Look at that! Look at all that varnish. Look at all that nasty, all that nasty factory varnish. Like I said, if you do want to super chat, powerchat.live slash trsar down there in the corner. Feel free to drop a super chat. Be happy to uh, take a look at that. Yeah, that's looking real good. That's going to air out a little bit. And we're going to move on. We're going to move on to the first layer of dyeing on the first shoe, which is going to be a general... Because while we're not doing... With this, we're just actually... For these shoes, we're just going to be doing a basic artisan patina. Because there's already a medallion, there's already broguing, you know, it's it's a very nice styled shoe as it is. There's already a lot going on with the shoe. You chatted and TM Telegram won't let me DM. Well, I'll take a look at that in a second here. But yeah, it's already a very busy shoe, so we're just gonna do a basic patina. We're gonna put emphasis on all the seams and the lines and give it a nice, you know, a little bit of depth to it. We're not going to do any marbling or any crazy designs just because it already has a bit of design to it. So it's already got it. We've already got a good template here. We don't want the shoe to be too busy. It's still part of the whole outfit. But let me take a look and make sure that Power Chat is working. Uh, one second here, guys. One second here. More, uh, more tech hiccups here. Let's see here. Okay, so what is The Kentucky work? chapter of the Ku Klux Klan sent $5. You do good work, boy. <laughs> Have you ever designed hoods and robes? <laughs> Have you ever designed Asking hoods for and a friend. Listen, listen, as an Irish Catholic, as an Irish Catholic, I don't know if I can avow... I can avow such things, you know. The clan, the clan is a horrible group. They, they give, they gave Catholics a hard time. 
like the worst thing one could do. It really is. It's you know, it's horrible. It's like the worst thing they ever did. You know, that's a, you know, outside of that, you know, I, I hear I hear I hear there's good people on both sides, you know. <laughs> McMahon sent ten dollars ye and Nick Vibin. Tr dripping and sipping. Yeah, I'm thinking we're back. You know, I am thinking we're back. I am thinking we're back. So exceedingly true. I am thinking we're back. In fact, I know we're back. McMahon sent ten dollars ye and Nick Vibin. Tr dripping and sipping. Dripping and sipping. We yeah, are dripping I'm thinking and sipping. We are dripping and we are sipping. We get old power chat. The Kentucky chapter of the Ku Klux Klan sent five dollars. We will make an exception for you, but those, those roads better, better be, be looking, looking nice. nice. Well, if you put it like that. I suppose I, I suppose I have to, uh, you know, I have to, uh, I have to respect it to put, for, I forgot to put the goal up. Let's see here. Oh, well, super chats are coming through. That's what matters here. Everything else we can, uh, everything else we can. Deal with it another time. All right. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so they are coming through. It's looking good. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. I just wanted to make sure. I didn't want anyone to make sure they were getting scanned or anything like that. TR saving fashion from Chinese and GOS. Is, it's so true. It's really me and yay against the world. You know, yeah, granted, you know, the most monumental thing in American politics right now is that Nick Fuentes has, um, you know, has, and, and yay are, uh, are uh, are collaborating and likely working on a president on the presidential campaign, and um, and everyone is talking about it. But you know the real the real secret of it all is um, is that you know T R and Ye are like the arbiter and master chief. You know back to back, you know fending off you know trying to save style from being gay and Jewish. Your sideburns are gone. Where did they go? They're on vacation. You know, they're on vacation. No, I decided to change it up. I got a little bored. You know, you can't do the same thing forever. All right, so let's move on. Let's get into the fun part. Let's get into dying. All right. All right, so we got, like I said, our, our, our main, our left guy right here. We're going to start, like so. first thing we're going to do, we're going to get a nice buckskin color all over this. So that's going to be the first little bit of life we breathe back into this shoe here. It's a nice, is a, a nice, tasteful little buckskin. We got buckskin and I got saddle tan, which are about the same color. We're going to put a little bit of that on these cups. So the funniest thing, when I first tried doing this, before I put the lid back on this acetone before I spill it, Stuff will eat right. I thought I fucked up my desk before. Pour some acetone on it. No, I actually found out the hard way. I tried to put some acetone in this, and it ate through the entire bottle like alien blood. Like it was, it was very effective. So I'm gonna be mixing buckskin and uh, saddle tan. They're about the same color. But what these are gonna do here is um, this is gonna be our nice base color. You always wanna start with the light, move up to the dark as the light will always come through a little bit on the dark and it creates this really, really nice uh, depth, even on a more plain patina. We'll pour that in there. Get that out the way here. Put the lid back on that. Put a little bit of the saddle tan in here. Like I said, it's about the same color. We just need that light tan color the kind of basic bitch dress shoe tan color. I think a lot of people know it very well. Um, you know, that kind of like light tan. You know, that's one of the things, if I, if I can do anything with, you know, with the J. Fitzpatrick shoes or custom tanning people's shoes and stuff like that, um, 
you know, I would, uh, it would be to, uh, save the young man away from the basic bitch, uh, tan derby dress shoe. Because there's just so many better options out there. There really are. Regarding clothing, I need some assistance. I'd be more than happy to help you, Forgotten America. Um, I'm not sure why it's not showing up on here. Let me, actually, I'm just going to wrap my hand in this and I'll make, I thought it should be. It should be up. Oh, there it is. So yeah, you can you can go to this email right here at the bottom. Um, and that'll be code you know code TR starter J for pack four get you ten percent off. But you can email me at T starter Taylor on tap. I'd be more than happy to do any consulting for you. And like I said, we also do, I also do uh you know my specialty is custom clothing. So uh you know. Don't just come for the candy. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's get this buckskin dye on here. Like I said, it's just this nice light tan color. And this is an alcohol-based dye, so if you do want to dilute it a little bit, you can. Um, just use rubbing alcohol, which I have on here, which I will be using um, when I put the black parts on. Kind of can follow the, uh, you know, the shape of the shoe there. You just want to make sure you get nice, even coats. Make sure you get down. The only, the only headache. Some of my favorite shoes I've ever done have been brogue, but the real headache is getting. Make sure you get down into the actual brogue punches. Like I said, it looks really dark right now. It almost looks burgundy, but it's gonna lighten up a whole lot when it dries out. You can already see it starting to lighten up there a little bit. Everyone freaks out, and then um, you know. But that's usually how it goes. I did a pair of these for actually one of the one of the DC Groiper guys. He has a pair of patinaed J Fitzpatrick shoes, and they you know not to shoe docks, but uh, he's got a pair of J Fitzpatricks that I I did a custom patina job on, and he wears them a lot. They look really good. They're a little bit lighter in color, and these are going to be a little bit darker. Yeah, see that we can almost do a spectator kind of thing, you know, just not touch the top. I was actually thinking about turning these into spectators, but I know the guy that's wearing them. I think he'd prefer a more consistent color throughout. And I'm not worried about it hitting the sides here at all, because I'm going to, even though it's rubber, I'm going to soak in some, um, some black heel dressing just to, uh, just to be thorough. Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. As you can see, it's already starting to come back to its light color. Is that as since it's alcohol based, it's going to darken quite a bit, and then it's going to lighten back up to its actual color. Alcohol is fumigous; it loves to evaporate. That's nice. That's real nice. Go on around. Yeah, look at that. It already starts to look more artisan. Even with just that, I mean, once it dries, it's going to look a lot lighter tan. But uh, but it already looks, it looks like how it's going to look at the end. This is actually a really good preview of how things are going to look at the end. And then, like I said, I'll go through with some wax and uh, shoe cream and touch up these little scrape spots. You know, we do things right around here. Always dip off that extra there. Yeah, whenever you get a new pair of shoes, always, always, freaking always, if you derive nothing else from this, it is like get a pair of freaking shoe trees. Whenever you get a new pair of shoes. Because it is going to save you and it's going to save your shoes. Put them right back in there when you get when you kick them off. I know it's tempting to leave them on the floor for three to four days. Believe me, I know. I have. And um, I can tell you, you just go put them in the shoe trees and enjoy your afternoon. Yeah. We're just 
we'll let that sit and let that dry. Like I said, that first layer, it actually is looking a lot like how it'll end up. Ethan, <laughs> Ethan Ralph 1 TR seething. Should I be seething? What should, what should I be seething about? I love Ethan Ralph. I love Ethan Ralph. What is he do? Is he doing? Is he doing numbers on me? He doing numbers on me. He's not even on right now. These people trying to start things, trying to start brother wars. Unbelievable, sick, sick people here. Sick, sick people. Sick, sick people. There we go. I'm actually going to do, you know, I'll, I'll come back to the, I already got a little die in the end part there, but you can kind of see what a spectator might look like here. <laughs> Like I said, I'll dab away the excess here. But yeah, it's almost like what a spectator might look like, you know, with the light vamp. There you go, you got your custom patina, <laughs> custom half ass patina <laughs> spectator. I really do love a good spectator, though, you know. If I, if I, if I thought he, you know, the, the guy that um, I'm doing these for would like a spectator, I would just go ahead and do it. I'm going to get underneath this little nick here just to make sure that the die sets in. Shout out to the Right Wing Watch Journal Watch. So true. Right Wing Watch Journal. We love that you're in chat. We love that you're watching. You know, honestly, send a super chat my way. You know, tell me what's on your mind. Tell me what's on your mind, Right Wing Watch. I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure there is a lot on the average Right Wing Watch Journal's mind right now. I would love to hear all about it. If you have any style questions, I would I will even help out the drip of our Right Wing Watch Journalists. Are really our most effective and consistent clippers. At the end of the day, if anyone if anyone deserves a charitable bit of help when it comes to improving one's style, I would be more than happy to donate my time to a right-wing watch journalist, you know. At the end of the day, they have done so much for America First, clipping so much of Nick's show. Honestly, you know, it is a constant competition, I bet, between the AF interns and, um, and right-wing watch journalists for who is the best clipper, you know. I bet they have little fun little, um, little rivalries in, in the office. You know. There we go. Look at that. That's a nice, a nice even coat. A beautiful saddle tan buckskin. We're gonna like I said, these are already looking really good. They're already starting to look uh, nice and patinaed. So we're gonna let that I'm gonna let that um, let that other one sit here. This one's looking pretty good though. This one's looking really nice. I'm liking how this tan is setting in. It already has a kind of pat artisan uh, patina kind of look to it. You know, you can see the darker edges there. But what we're going to do now is we are going to hit it with some medium brown, some mahogany, and we're going to hit it with some dark brown, which I am really excited for because it's going to give it this really, really nice. Depth. It's going to be dark brown by the end of it. It's going to have a black edging, and it's going to be. It's going to look ten times better than when it started. Y'all saw what it looked like when it started. All right. Got our mahogany. Our mahogany. Our dark brown. Pretty sure this is medium brown. Yeah, this is medium brown. So we're gonna do medium. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do mahogany, medium, and then dark brown. And then we're gonna come back at it with the black. 
something said, why, you know, you have SGT, or you just dyed this this color. You know, why are you stacking dyes? Because what it's going to do as those dyes interact with each other and all and all they all kind of aerate out around the same time, it's going to create this really interesting depth. It's just going to create this really wonderful color all across the whole shoe. And that's what we want. So let's get our mahogany on here. Well, first thing we got to do, got our little dabber in a bit of isopropyl alcohol. to preserve it and keep it from drying out. There we go. Have this a little more Manhattan. Some guy repairing shoes. Yeah, no. Can I repair your Yeezys? I would leave that to a sneaker expert. I'm a dress shoe expert. Love my sneaker heads out there, but I'm a dress shoes guy through and through. And I would not feel uh, confident at all touching a pair of sneakers to uh, repair or modify. That is a, uh, you know, I know I know where my limitations are. This is gonna be mahogany. This is a little bit more of a reddish brown, which I always love adding to these um, to these deeper patines. You can see that light buckskin color in certain parts here. So we're going to give this a good, nice once over in this very dark brownish red. And we're going to come back at it with the medium brown. This red, I like to put this red closer to the bottom. I never like it to be the first one, but I do like it to be the second. Because this, these little red, these subtle red tones are going to come up through the grain in a really, really beautiful way. I have a pair of dark brown um, Oxfords. They were my first pair from J. Fitzpatrick. They were the pair that got me in love with the brand. And they had a little bit of this slightly red undertone. You know, just when I, you know, when I studied the shoe, I would notice it subtly. It was not something you would notice right away. But yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a two-tone spectator look for you. But, um, but, you know, I love that little bit of reddish undertone. And ever since, it's kind of like gauntlet cuffs. On suits, you know, ever since I tried it once, I was in love with it. And I was like, this is, this is something that not everybody does, but this is something that everyone has a right to enjoy in this, in this beautiful, you know, art form that unfortunately, you know, there's so many, that's one of the reasons I love Jay Fitzpatrick because they don't do this. Um, I, so many companies of men's or be shoes, suits. They cut so many corners, not even just like production quality, like, oh, you can suddenly look at the stitching and tell this was done by machine and not hand. Not even something as, as bold as that, but, you know, just a general lack of personality when it comes to what they make. You know, they, they don't tend to uh, do anything really unique with styling or anything like that. I mean, you're just now, just in like the last couple of years, starting to see more double-breasted suits, which I do partially take credit for, you know. I was, uh, you know, I, uh, I helped Tyler Russell pick out his uh, pinstripe double-breasted suit. You see him in a lot. We picked that out um, during the New York Stop the Stab rallies. We went to a suit supply of all places. And I think I pulled for him. Um, I ended up kind of doing the, the sales lady's job for her. Um, I pulled a three-piece and a double-breasted, and we ended up going with the double-breasted. And it looks so good on him. Like, I'm really glad to see him still wearing it. And, I, you know, and... Before that, I was recommending people do double-breasted because if you're going to do a two-piece suit, double-breasted really is the way to go, in my opinion, because it's got so much personality to it. You know, it's uh, it's got so much more interest to it, and it's got a lot more authority to it. Double-breasted look makes your chest look broader, makes your waist look narrower because of the button layout. Like, it's just a more, it's just a different way to do things. It's a way with more detail, and the real plague in menswear right now is just a complete loss of detail. These things almost look like oxblood, like cordovan now. <laughs> and like I said, you know, it's like I said, but you can see the, the buckskin undertones showing up through that. And as this mahogany dries here, then we'll move on to the medium brown, which is going to lighten it up a little bit. And then we're going to move on to the dark brown as a final finish. And then we're going to hit all the little, uh, all the little edgings. We're going to hit it with black with a Q-tip. And that's going to look really, really nice. Really, really nice. I'm very excited about that. So 
the layers blend, they blend a little bit. They do blend a little bit. You can put multiple layers on before they've completely dry, and that, that kind of helps them blend a little bit, in my experience. Now, if you're doing marbling, if you want a more um, more high contrast marbling, where like the you know the little flecks and colors are a lot more defined, you may want to do it over the course of several days. But this right here, we're just doing a general, uh, you know, kind of multicolored patina. So, carrying them together, in my opinion, is going to give you the um, is going to give you a more dramatic, but uh, but tasteful kind of look. You know, like if I was marbling. I would do marbling over the course of several days. So then you get those really defined little flecks of color. They don't look as blended together. But uh, there's, a, there's a spectator for you. Look at that. I love a two-tone spectator. That's such a nice shoe. That's such a nice color combo. That is, that is a really nice color combo. I really love that. I may do. Never know. Never freaking know. What is the thing I'm using to dye it? I'm using, uh, I always use Feebing's dye. One, because you can buy it at a lot of craft stores, and their website has tons and tons of color options. So no matter what kind of shoes I'm working on, they have a color selection that's good for what I'm doing. So um, it's not sponsored by Feedings at all. It's just the, the brand that I love to use. But yeah, I should honestly, I should do, I should do a one regular, one spectator, because that looks really cool. Like that looks, that's a really nice, really nice spectator, uh, you know, patinaed spectator right there. Missed a spot on the toe. Did I miss a spot? I, oh. Look at you. Good eye. Kids these days, man, they're getting smarter. No more spectator. I love how this is gonna turn out, man. I can already, I can already tell you, it's gonna be beautiful. Get that underneath there. You know, art hoes dye their hair. Real niggas dye their shoes. Just a fact of the matter. Look at that. Look at that. Would you look at that? Oh, I forgot the tongue. How could I forget? My favorite part of these flipping shoes is the tongue. I love, I love having to dig down in here. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> all right so we got that one there sitting there like i said you can already see some of that buckskin that light buckskin color shining through that's gonna be really nice especially as it starts to dry more and more that's gonna be real groovy all right yeah see this is already starting to dry pretty well like i said it's got kind of this burgundy look to it but we're gonna bring it back to brown now B -b -b bring it b -b 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 back to b -b 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 brown and then we're going to use um, a little bit of dark brown we're going to use a little bit of black and then we will be done folks we'll be done just in time for Nick's well, we'll have a little bit of extra time before Nick's show because I want to have another cocktail before Nick's show because tonight is going to be a very big night where's my medium brown Rut row. Rut row, Raggy. That's why I always coat with wax paper and plastic wrap. In the event of a nasty spill, you know. Better have it than not need it. 
How's it smelling in there, TR? Well, it smells much like my bar. It smells like alcohol. And this smells much more like chemical alcohol. It's not nearly as tasty as that alcohol, but it'll do. <laughs> it'll do. And our dull bar. Look at that, the color is shining through so well on that. Look at that, that is such a rich color. Like I said, this touch of brown in there, and then like I said, we'll hit it with the dark brown and the and a little bit of diluted black. You got us a nice shoe, folks. Almost looks reddish going on. Do you do any hatting with mercury? No, I'm not that mad a hatter. No, my one hatter I know he doesn't work with. Uh, he doesn't work with mercury, but he's a, he's a very good hatter. His hats cost like two grand. He's an absolute looney to him, but his hats are really good. I'm just gonna coat that. All along the edges here. Of course, it won't be as fully light as it will be at the end as it will be tonight. I will post final pictures just because it is going to start to lighten up. As you can see, you know, between runs, it does start to lighten up a little bit. But, uh, but once all the layers have cured, that's when I'll post the, the final pictures. But you can get a good idea of what the end product is going to be. Kind of between, uh, between washings here. It's kind of like I said, multi-toned, very antique looking shoe. We're going to let that sit and dry. Hit this one with the medium. I hope everyone had a lovely Thanksgiving. It was very fun for me. We went out to Seven Springs Ski Resort and I got recognized by a fella in a Medicare hat of all things very weird. He's like, hey, you're the cozy fashion guy. And they're like, yeah, yeah, peculiar. I didn't realize I looked like uh, like Michael Alberto. That was very strange. I didn't know if I would, if it was over or if I was back. I really couldn't tell. I mean, I appreciate the sentiment, but how much did you get these at the shop, by the way? I got these for $10. I gifted them. And for much like I'm gifting this patina my friends because we love our friends and we take care of our friends you know I offer my services up and one day when he's got a big fancy job I'm sure he'll you know be a very good client of mine the key is just taking care of folks doing what you love if you love taking care of folks why not do it especially in your way that you're knowledgeable about it. you know I'm not a heart surgeon here I'm not doing anything crazy but you know if you're skilled in something, you know, it's kind of the whole, it's kind of an inverse of the whole, uh, you know, if you're good at something, never do it for free. Um, if you're good at something, arguably, sometimes you should do it for free because it serves your fellow man, helps them out, especially if they're not in the best of ways and, you know, you have the time or the resource to, to spend. 
too helpful, and I think you should, you know, a little bit here. I'm not saying rebuild, you know, build someone an entire house for free if you're like a contractor or a carpenter or something like that, but, you know, if you can help your friends out, then you absolutely should. If you can help out your fellow man, I think you absolutely should. And I think, you know, a big part of rebuilding a true Christian society with lots of, you know, social trust in those things that we desire for a more traditional society, uh, it's going to be very necessary to be, you know, a little bit charitable. Get a little bit of that excess off there. Get a little excess off the edges here. We're going to let that sit there, open up and dry out. And that's going to be your really nice look. So that medium brown is going to come out so much lighter than it looks right now. It's going to be really, really nice. The only thing is you have a couple different layers of, uh, of still drying dye. So you still have to, you have to wait a little bit for those, those layers to all dry at once. But when it does, it's going to look really, really cool. I cannot flipping wait. You can kind of start to see how things are going here though. You can kind of start to see like, kind of how the dark parts and the light parts are blending together. Like I said, it really looks almost like black and burgundy right now, but you can start to see the brown tones coming through there. Those are going to be really, really clean. And those are done here. But now that we have the main bodies of the shoes done, we can move forward to the detailing, which is a really fun part. A little more time consuming because, you know, you can't just swap it over. But what you can do, we're going to take a little bit of this what little dark brown I have left here. We're actually going to go over the, the basal parts with dark brown, and then I'll touch it up with black. He said, because a true, this is, <laughs> you know, these artists in patinas, there's, they're, they're a complete art form to themselves, but traditionally, a patina in shoes comes from 10 to 20 years of wear. And it's when you get them shined repeatedly, and the nutrients or the you know the, the proteins and the in the dyes and the um, on the oils and the, the waxes that you use to shine the shoes, they start to collect, and that's how you get the dark edges. But you don't want to wait 15 to 20 years. So one of the best things you can do. That's what we're actually going to do here. I'm not, we're actually going to take just a little bit of the shirt and wrap it and tie it around my old hand here. Just going to dip a little bit into there. That's how we're going to get our dark brown. This part, like I said, is a lot more time intensive. You're essentially creating a shadow for the black parts with the dark brown. Which president had your favorite drip, man? It's my favorite president, Teddy Roosevelt. He had great drip. The detachable collars, the glasses. As a guy who likes detachable collars, glasses, and has a round face, I gotta say, Teddy Roosevelt was a great style in spell. You can't really see it super well yet. Mostly because these dark colors are already very dark. But but
absolutely adore. Haberdasher is not a gay term to use. I wouldn't call haberdashing a gay term. I think gay people use it, but you know, not necessarily a gay term by itself. I'm actually going to use. I think I'm going to use a dauber here. Actually, so you're just going to. I'm going to try a dauber here, and then just dry it out a little bit. Take away some of that excess. Yeah, I like that a lot better. I think they're going to be spectacular when they come out. I love doing this for stuff. I've done a pair of, uh, I do a pair, of, I did a pair of boots um, that were like this really, they said really ugly light tan color. Um, and I redid them completely with like a full marble patina. And, oh, I love them. Some of my favorite boots, like nice city boots. Dark brown's gonna blend really nice through that medium and that mahogany. And like I said, the medium brown you don't have to be as precise with because you know it's supposed to fade out. A little bit here so if you're you know like you, see, you just kind of want to follow the traces of like the significant parts of the shoe and let that really sit in where it needs to seam here. I love how this looks. I love how this is gonna be, man. I love I I cannot wait to wake up tomorrow and see this thing completely dried and good to go. Absolutely cannot. This would be one of my favorite hobbies during the lockdown was doing this to like all my shoes. Because once I got good at it, I just went absolutely nuts. I did this with all of my footwear. I did different ones, you know, like some were marbled, some were regular, some were had cool designs. I love marbling the best. It's like a very natural, but still kind of eccentric look. Yeah, you can kind of see, like you said, kind of the dark parts versus the light parts there, how it's starting to develop. That's what we're really looking for is, like I said, that depth, 
that uh, je ne sais quoi, as the French in France would say. Oh yeah, see that's already starting to come together really well. We may not actually finish it tonight because I want to wait for the full shoe to cure and dry before we put the polish on. So we may have to wait uh, a whole night for this, but um, but you can already get a really good idea, especially if this one dried out here, just how nice of a shoe we're going to be dealing with at the end here. And I cannot wait to send these off once once they're completely you know done and done. But I think we're actually going to wait for all this to settle here and then we're gonna cure up the little nicks and spots because I think this is gonna take a little longer than you know than initially anticipated. Yeah still got a little bit left in there. Cool. Cool cool cool. Maybe I'll open up doing this again for people if you know you think you'd like to have your you know Shoes artisan patinaed. Uh, you know, shoot me a DM. Maybe we'll uh, we'll get it sorted out. I always want to get both sides of the brogan. I forgot to hit the brogan on the other shoe. I was so distracted by my chat. I forgot to hit the brogan on the other shoe. I'm gonna have to go back. Your super chats hit I I'll have to check here I'll have to hit up Yob about why power chat isn't working because a few have gone through so it might be I think it might be something on power chats in because I've gotten a couple of them kind of racially stereotypical for me to be doing this you know the whole thing about the Irish will you know will clean your shoes at night and leave them on your doorstep you know it, it actually is very racially typical of me to uh, to be at this as a hobby you know fixing up people's shoes you've been doing this and who taught you I taught myself all this I'm very similar to tailoring I am self-taught I'm kind of a autistic savant. I get really into something. I research it and learn how to do it overnight. Then I just get really good at it over the course of a few years and then move on to a new skill. I usually do two or three skills at a time. You know. Got to got to stay uh, got to stay fit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, so those are looking good. Look at that. Look at the depth of color in that right there. I mean, that is spectacular. I, wow, we, I cannot wait to, um, like I said, put the black detailing on and then, um, and like I said, put the polish on. I think we'll actually do that tomorrow because I want the rest of this to settle before I do the black detailing just to make sure I'm hitting it in the right places. So, so we're going to wait for all that. So we are going to let these sit here, and I think we'll just hang out for a little bit. we still got a few more minutes until Nick pops in, but yeah. From where they went to where they are now, coming along. Really, really beautiful. So like I said, I'll put some black heel dressing on this, 
and I've got some different colored laces for this, so it's going to look really, really cool. I, I <laughs> oh, I miss doing this. I've not done this in such a long time. It's going to look so, so good when it's done. Yeah. There we go, and we're back. I'm thinking we're back. I'm thinking we're back to the main show. All right. Oh, man. I Like I said, you know, I said it once. I said, I'll say it a million times, but I love doing, doing work like this. I love uh, craft work. You know, whether it's woodwork, leather work, I love learning it, and then I love, I love doing it for people. And I love bringing a more uh, antique take to it all, you know. It really is, it really is rewarding, you know. It's just, it's such a fun way to do things, such a fun way to live. It is very cool. Let me take a look at and see why Power Chat might be giving us a hard time. check my I think I might know I think I might be using the wrong email in my log if I like why don't we check my old phone here Ugh. one moment I'm like 99% sure that it's like just the wrong email I'm using Litho sent five dollars. I wish I knew about using acetone for when I cleaned up and okay, restained so my Thursday Okay, so it is working cactus. again. Next time. Okay, so they seem to be coming through. Or at least that one did. So thank you. Yeah, no, using acetone is uh, very important to this kind of stuff. Um, you know, you just got just don't wear latex gloves or use it uh, or try to contain it in plastic because it will um, it will eat through that. You'll be thoroughly thoroughly annoyed. Okay, so that one went through. So Super Chats are coming through to some extent here. Okay, so I am using the right email. Okay. Anonymous sent $5. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I, I, uh, I missed it here. I was... And here, let me, my headphones don't want to reach all the way around here. One sec here, we'll get this pulled up and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at these here. Okay. You know, you really can't, you know. If it's not one thing, it's another. You can't make that up. Okay, so we should be good now. We should be back. I'm thinking we're back. There we go. There we go. There we go. We're back. We're so back. Okay, well, that's for that here. Show me my previous. Thing that's kind of annoying. Maybe I'm just looking at the wrong thing.
Okay, okay, never mind, never mind. Okay, they're coming in, they're coming. Okay, we're good. We're so back, we're so back, we're good. Yo, so let's go through here. Anonymous, thank you, Anonymous. I see a YouTube link here. We'll take a look at that here in just a minute. Yo, Yay West. Hey, dude, Nick, show me this website. I love what you're doing, man. You should be part of the Yeezy team. God bless King. Well, if, if that's really Yay West, hey, God bless you too. God bless you too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yay West. Assuming that's really Yay West, that's that's really awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a shoe head. Not, not as much a sneaker head, but uh, very much a shoe head, man. We love to do cool stuff around here. You should be part of the Yeezy team. Yo, yo, Yeezy TR Sarter shoe collab. I'm down. I'm down. About using acetone, I cleaned up and restrained my Thursday captain. <laughs> Next time. Well, I'm not sure what a Thursday captain is. You'll have to. Is that a, uh, is that a, is that a drink? Is this an actual person you're trying to restrain? Okay, we're all caught up. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Very, very cool. So that's been updated. Yo, was that really Yay West? I don't know if it really was. Yo, Yay West in chat? Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, yeah, seriously, if, if uh, that was really Yay West trying to uh, collab on some shoes, man, I would be honored. That would be, there would be, you know, that would, that would be a different level. That would be a different level. Cyber Vegan. Well, thank you, Cyber Vegan. We love Cyber Vegan. Always popping in here to say hi. Thank you very much. Very, very epic. Let's freaking go. All right. So, yeah. We got our, uh, we got, you know, we did a lot today. We got these shoes knocked out. Very, very epic. Got a little, great. My, I got a little, uh, I got a little, little poo on my hands here. Look at this. I got a little, little dye on my hands here. Play that funky. Oh, that's right. Someone sent me a YouTube link. Let's take a look here. What do you got for me? Driving home for Christmas. Let's give it. Let's give a little listen. Running out of cord real estate here. Let's see, driving home for Christmas. Yeah, I can dig that. I can dig that. Nice, uh, very cozy little Christmas music. It is officially, you know, post Thanksgiving. I gotta go get a little guy. You know what? That's what I'm gonna do. I will be right back, folks. I'm gonna go get my Driving new, home my, for new Christmas. my new co-host. Well, oh, I can't I'm wait to see those my main faces. But uh, I'm gonna get my other co-host real fast here. Driving home for Christmas. has ever been a hot Alright, welcome back to Little Guy here. Though you can I wish I could have a little more around here, but, um, but Little Guy is here to stay. Listen to I'm driving home for Christmas. I've done a lot of driving. 
Christmas 2022 playlist together. I really, really do. Have I ever had? I have not had Pendleton whiskey. Uh, yeah, I can't say I've ever had Pendleton. I've had Angel's Envy, Whistle Pig. Uh, I, I enjoy Eagle Rare when I can find it. And of course, I like Templeton Rye. Love a good Templeton Rye. I'm a big Rye guy. It's a very delicious, delicious drink. And, and for, from now on, this, this flavor, whenever I can find it, is always going to remind me of my time streaming here with you guys. So that's that's really special to me, you know? Pendleton is pretty. I bet it is. I bet it is the modern monarchist. The one, the only, the modern monarchist. You'll love to see it. Yeah, it's been such a fun night, guys. I'm so glad y'all could y'all stuck around. Through my lovely patina aging of these shoes here. This is a beautiful work of art. Once it's done, it's going to look even better. You know, and I'll definitely be sure to post some after pics once it's fully done. But that's the most we can do for it tonight. And I think we are going to wrap it up, folks, and get ready. Because, you know, in a short while here, in a short while here, Nick's going to come back. And it is going to be... It's gonna be a show not to be forgotten. It's gonna be it's gonna be the Super Bowl for racists, I hear, you know. <laughs> it's gonna be a great time. I cannot be more excited. I cannot wait. It's gonna be an absolute blast. I am ready for it. And I'm gonna go get even more ready for it. So with that being said, this has been a fantastic night. I'm so glad I could have shared it with you guys. This is our first night of really the Christmas season, I would say. I say, you know, I'm a big Thanksgiving head. I don't really start decorating and celebrating Christmas until after Thanksgiving, but today's like the first day of the Christmas season. It really is. And uh, we're going to start celebrating the Christmas season. We're going to do some more decorations. I'm going to put some Christmas lights up. It's going to be an absolute blast. It's going to be so much fun, and I cannot be more excited for it. I really couldn't. You know, it's, it's my favorite time of year. It's so cozy. It's so good, and I get to share it with all my friends. I get to share it with all you guys. Well, you guys are my friends. You know, you guys are all friends in my book. You know, it's going to be such a lovely time. I cannot wait. And, uh, you know, my, my, my heart is a flutter. <laughs> it's going to be a very, very nice, very nice Christmas season. Full of white pills. I don't know how you can be a black pill, really. I don't. I really do feel bad. Um, be sure to send the suicide hot hotline number to any black pillars, counter signalers, or seethers. Um, as they're having a really tough time right now. The haters are having a really, really tough time right now. And um, I don't know how they're handling, quite frankly. You know, I mean, I have the, ni I have the nicest whiskey in the county. So um, I don't know how they're coping, but it's not, as, it's not as nice as I'm celebrating. That's good. I don't know how you're coping, but it's not as nice as how I'm celebrating. You can feel the cheer in the air. You absolutely can. Hunting season just started. It's going to be a great time. Christmas season is AF victory season. It's more than AF victory season. It is the season. It is Christ season. Well, all year round, every day is Christ day. But Christmas season, Christ mass season, you know, this is the season of Christ. And, of course, what better season to, you know, to celebrate being a follower of Christ 
than, than, than Christmas, you know? What better time to celebrate our victories as followers of Christ than during Christmas? I mean, you should celebrate every day. You should celebrate and rejoice and humble yourself all at the same time every day. But if you're going to celebrate, if you're really just going to let let your white pills fly, Christmas time is the time to do it. It really is. It really, really is. Christmas, we celebrate the birth of hope to the world, really. A, a, a complete and utter change in the whole nature of existence is what we celebrate on Christmas, really. So what better time to celebrate the complete fundamental change in the, the stuff that we've come to know, even just the last few years, you know, the, the nature of existence and the, the timeline of humanity is, is much longer than AF has ever existed, than America has ever existed. But the values are the same. The values are the same and the truth has not changed. So if you're going to celebrate now is really, really the time to celebrate. There is no room for blackpilling. There's no room for haters. There's no room for counter signalers. There's no room for, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. No, it is yay 24. It is Christmas. It's going to be a beautiful Christmas season. Celebrate with your loved ones. You know, you know, uh, most canceled man in America is free this weekend. Cuddle up with your loved ones and watch the one of the best documentaries made in the last few years. Seriously, it's going to be... It's going to be the greatest Christmas season ever. So many people are going to get red pilled that already aren't, and the ones that already are are going to uh, are just going to be celebrating. They're going to be celebrating more people coming in to uh, celebrate truth with them because that's the coolest thing. You know, there's some there's some degree of fun you have when you're like I'm vindicated, I got proven right, but there's something so much more so much more enriching that when you are proven right and that you know the truth that you laid down a lot of social sacrifice for is proven true. There's a lot to celebrate there. There's a lot of happiness you feel. And for me, when that's happened, it's never been, you know, there's a little bit of like, you know, pack watch, haha, doubters and haters concede. But, you know, a big part of it, I, I really do feel this urge to welcome those people that got proven wrong. Now that they've been unequivocally proven wrong, they can be welcomed in And now that they've been humbled. You know what I mean? That once someone's been humbled, they should be allowed to repent and be welcomed in. And I really look forward to that. I really look forward to a doubter or a hater being shown the light and realizing they were wrong and being welcomed in. There's something really beautiful about that. There really is. Now, if you're a doubter or a hater, you have to voluntarily repent. You have to, you know, sh you know, you have to uh, admit you were wrong. But when you admit you were wrong, you can't be welcomed. You know, and that should be celebrated. It really should be. When someone who was wrong admits they were wrong and changes, that's that's one of the most beautiful things in the world. It really is. But uh, that's a, that's enough diatribe from me. <laughs> that's enough. That's enough rambling from me. I wouldn't call it diatribe. I mean, that's all very true. But uh, that's enough uh, rambling from me. Nick's going to be starting his show soon here. I'm going to go talk to my to my homies, going to hang out for a little bit. I'm going to listen to America first. After like a week, I, I, meet, I need my fix. I need my fix. You know, it's uh, it's going to be great. I really, I cannot wait. And the fact that Ye is watching, that, that very well might have actually been Ye that sent that super chat. That is, um, <laughs> man, we really like... It's never over. It's never over. I've never heard it's so over ever said... Uh, I outs or I've never heard it said unironically. You know what I mean? Like it's always been ironic because we've never gone anywhere. We only get more back. You know, it is. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. I can't. I can't really describe it any other way, because you get to watch the balance of nature all at once. You get to watch the you know the, the mechanism of of God's plan working all at once. And if that is not the biggest privilege in the world, man, I don't know what is. I really don't. But with all that being said, this has been a fantastic night. I've been your host here, our starter. This has been Vintage Style, Vintage Values. We fixed up a pair of shoes. We shot the ship. We drank a Manhattan. We had a little bit of rye. We had a great time is what we had. That's really what we had here, you know. But before me is a lot of craft supplies and a lot of, uh, a lot of handiwork. But before me is also a really great time. So with that being said, good night, God bless, and take it easy. Thanks.